Hello friend, my name is Asyndra and today I'm going to continue playing for you Cinderella Phenomenon with Comp. Hello. Last time we met Blarg and he tried to kidnap us. Now probably Pastel's here. Your mother. <laughs> yeah, probably. She's dead though. <laughs> Her zombie sent him. Gross. Ew, gross. Anyway. <laughs> Parfait walks into the room, startling us both. It has been two weeks since I last saw her. Her face is ashen. Parfait! You know that continuously using your magic takes a toll on your body. I ship it. Mm -hmm. I have no choice. The witches... Her voice trails off as her eyes meet Dolores. Parfait and Dolores look at each other sullenly. The tension in the room mounts as they continue to stare at each other without uttering a word. Eventually, Parfait's eyes wander to me. Keeping her in the dark won't make this situation any better, Dolora. Parfait moves toward me, but her knees buckle. Before I can react, Dolora is already at her side, supporting her. No, don't die! Parfait, yeah. You need I re you know I read that as parfait. I need you to rest. <laughs> well, I mean that's true. <laughs> that's that's true. Parfait, you need to rest. I'll take care of this. No, she needs to hear this from both of us. So sit down. Yeah, sit the fuck down. <laughs> what is going on? <clears throat> We wanted to tell you about this later, but we can no longer afford to wait. Delora helps Parfait to a chair, thank God. I tentatively take a seat opposite the two of them. We're going to tell you the whole truth of this situation. The whole truth? Delora sighs before she eventually speaks. The whole truth and nothing but the truth, I don't get. <laughs> Do you know why I cursed you, princess? Some twisted sense of mischief? That's not the whole reason. At least she's honest. Yeah. We needed you to change your ways, princess, to change how you see the world. If we didn't do something, you were going to end up as merciless and cold-hearted as your mother. What are you talking about? She's already as merciless and cold-hearted as her mother. She fired a serving girl over an accident. My eyes go to Parfait, but she doesn't meet my gaze. Hild Hildir. Hildir. She, she's a fucking Viking. <laughs> Your mother was not always so cruel. Parfait's eyes look wet, as if she is about to cry. Why are you speaking as if you knew her? She was my friend. Long before she was queen, Hildir was like a sister to me. But she changed when the witch hunt started. What does the witch hunt have to do with Mother? You know... Oh shit, I fixed the button! Ooh, on your fidget cube? Yeah, the middle button wouldn't press, it wouldn't click, and now it's doing it. Yay! <laughs> Parfait okay. does not meet my eyes, but Dolores is looking right at me. I'm so happy. <laughs> your mother was a witch, Asyndra, the most powerful of witches. In fact. In fact, right. <laughs> she was the... <laughs> Hildir was the, the, the bearer of the dark crystal. My heart drops into the pit of my stomach. No, that is impossible. I am, I am sorry if the clicking is annoying. I can't. I'm happy that I, I fixed the button somehow. It's very quiet, so it shouldn't okay. be too bad. I'm going to put it down anyway, just in case we don't need 20 minutes of the click, 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 click in the background. <laughs> I have never seen her use magic. She cannot be a witch. That's what she wanted you to believe. You cannot keep something like that a secret. Uh, your mum did. If you try hard enough, you can keep anything a secret. If you tr fucking oh, 
even from your own family. I just totally did not see that chunk of the line. I'm like, why is she not moving on? And I look, I'm like, oh, because I missed half of the line. Okay. You said she. Bad. Sprays you. Uh, sorry. It's okay. But how? I'm sorry. Delora pauses for a long moment before she speaks. She erases your memory, Sassindra. The air leaves my lungs as I struggle to remain calm. Walt said that Mother ordered my memories to be erased, but... Are they saying that it was Mother herself who erased my memories? Probably. Yeah, I would assume. Jagged pieces of memory and thought begin to snap together in my mind. She needed you to be obedient and compliant. Whenever you acted out, she took that memory of disobedience from you. And it didn't take long at all to mold you into her perfect and unquestioning little doll. I grip my dress without realizing. My hands are shaking. Then I did know Walt's. Mother really did erase my memories of him. How much of- Yep. How much of my childhood did I lose? Well, I mean, probably I would say about 80%. Yeah, I was going to say most of it. Especially, like, as a little kid, you know, you don't, like, behave, you act out. Yeah. Neil Deere cherished humans before. She was kind and selfish. Self- selfless. <laughs> <laughs> she was devoted to maintaining the balance between the Lu- Lucius Malfoy and the Dark Crystal. That just makes them both evil. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Delora moves to place a gentle hand on Parfait's shoulder. It's not your fault. I trusted him too much. He swore that they would only be stories, small fantasies to share with his children. Hildir wanted to turn him away, but I disagreed. I allowed Hams to weave his tales about witches and fairies. The fairy tales? Laura nods. Hans is... I'm sorry, I literally cannot say that any other way. I just have to. I feel ya. <laughs> it's, just the, it's just one of those names you have to say in a certain way. Yeah. His Hans, his fairy tales, have become hugely popular, and in practically every single one of his stories, it was a witch who was bad and a fairy who was good. To add insult to injury, it was well known that Hans had been welcomed by the Lucius Malfoy Bearer, but not the Dark Crystal Bearer. I'm just imagining Parfait holding up a tiny Lucius Malfoy statue. <laughs> or a this tiny. Is my Malfoy! <laughs> a live one. It's just yelling and swearing, and she's <laughs> like, This is my <laughs> Lucius Malfoy. <laughs> Kicking and waving his fists around. Like, Let me down! Yeah. The humans took that information, and their imaginations ran wild. Hildir and I went to Hans to beg him to tell the truth, but it was too late. No matter what Hans said, everyone believed that he was being threatened by the witches. Looks like the lore is crying. Yeah. Pardon. I don't think he ever meant for things to get so out of hand, either. When the king at the time, your grandfather also voiced his negative opinion on witches, he only added fuel to the fire. It was as if he was giving humans permission to carry on their with their witch genocide. And we could do nothing to defend ourselves. We were bound by our oath to never hurt a living soul. The witch hunt lasted for years. Most of us were slaughtered. All witches are bound the 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 the, the dark crystal. I keep I keep tripping I keep tripping up because I both want to do the ten of bra or a breed, but I also want to do the dark crystal, and it's it's messing me up. Ten <laughs> the dark crystal. <laughs> <laughs> All witches are bound to the dark crystal bearer through the dark crystal itself. Skexy. Hildir felt each of the deaths like it was her own. 
it drove her mad. And she broke our oath. She killed the king, your grandfather. Mother killed my grandfather? As Hildir's powers kept growing more and more, more, what? <sighs> English is hard, and I don't <laughs> like it. I'm only speaking Esperanto. Alright. <laughs> it's a made-up language. Sort yeah. of. Get there's the like, I think, I think there's like three films, in, totally in Esperanto, and William Shatner was in one of them. <laughs> As Hildir's powers kept, power kept growing, more and more good witches were corrupted through her influence on the Dark Crystal. I tried to stop her, but she was already lost to reason. Hildir wanted to take NGL for the witches. She wanted to take revenge on the humans for what they had done to all of us. And since her father was next in line, Hildir forced Gennaro to marry her so she would have a legitimate claim to the throne. And she did. And she did it, even though she knew he loved another woman. The very woman who sits on the throne today. Ophelia. Dolora nods. The king has always loved... Ophelia? Hildir created the fairy tale curse to punish the humans. She wanted to fuel the Dark Crystal with their hatred and anger. Parfait's voice becomes very soft. The balance between dark and light was lost while, ha Hil while Hilda lived, Angel was a place of grief. I can feel an impending headache coming. But even if what you're saying is true, Mother is dead. She's been dead for four years. She is, but for some reason the witches are becoming more active. She ain't dead. Garland and Jurian's patrols have confirmed this. Patrols? Is that why they disappear at night? I had to cast a glamour on you so that other witches would be unable to recognize you as the princess. But it, but it seems... <laughs> like, they, <laughs> like they've already seen through uh, your glamour. They're looking for you, princess. The witches are looking for you. What? Why? The Tenna brought the Dark Crystal needs a bearer. A witch needs to take on that role and regulate the balance between Lucius Malfoy and the uh, Dark Crystal. For the past few years, it's been in a state of hibernation. We believe in Hild Hildir infused her life into the Dark Crystal to keep it stable. But now, the Dark Crystal's beginning to wake again. We believe that's why so many people are being cursed lately. The witches are preparing for their new bearer. Dolora turns it to me with an expression I cannot quite read. They only have to wait until you turn 18. The air in the room seems to disappear all at once. <gasps> Princess, on your 18th birthday, your curse will break regardless of whether you complete three good, your three good deeds. And you will become... The Dark Crystal Bearer. You will inherit that title and that power from your mother. Impossible. My heart is raising and I feel faint. Even if mother was a witch, I can't use magic at all. All halflings like you inherit their magic at 18. No, I am human. Princess. Dolores' expression is grim as she speaks. We've been watching over you for a long time, Asindra. 
We know what sort of influence your mother had on you. The curse was a test. We needed to know that you wouldn't return Angel to what it was when your mother was queen. We can't allow another great war to tear Angel apart. Delora and I believe that there is still goodness left in you. You just needed a wake-up call. Thus, the curse and the three good deeds. We wanted you to see what you hadn't in years, to be exposed to the true reality of things. And above all, we needed to see that you were capable of three good deeds. I attempt to grasp the fleeing thoughts in my mind, but to no avail. I feel numb. That's it. No more secrets. Parfait's voice is gentle when she speaks to me. The future of this kingdom is in your hands. Will you follow your mother's footsteps, or will you achieve the same balance that we had before? No matter how much I try, I am unable to sleep after my talk with Delora and Parfait. Mother was a wicked witch, and I am the next bearer of the Dark Crystal. It all makes sense now. So many people hated me because they thought I would be just like Mother. I feel the weight of that truth crash down on me and it is suffocating. What am I supposed to do now? I turn to my side and bring my knees to my chest. How do I know what the truth is anymore? Suddenly an idea occurs to me. There is one other person who might know the truth. Waltz. I wonder how he is doing. I slip out of my room and make my way towards Waltz's. Waltz is sound asleep when I push the door to his room open. You knock! Right? Right? He looks so small on his bed. Hmm? Knock! Knock! She also does this in Karma's route, and she walks in on him shirtless like three times. Oh my god. And she still doesn't knock, and I'm just like, why? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I pause to look at the hefty amount of herbs lying on the table. Those herbs. I remember Anne Rice once told me that they help with pain. Rumpel and Anne Rice have given Waltz a lot of them. Thoughts about the truth of my mother retreat to the back of my mind as I remember the encounter with Blarg. Waltz would never have gotten hurt if it wasn't for me. My eyes begin to sting. Now she's okay. She just walked into the room without what without fucking knocking. Oh my god. <sighs> she's in the middle of a mental breakdown. Probably. I mean, she's dealing with a lot. Let's be fair. Yeah. <laughs> it's like like I uh, I'm, I'm that's kind of why I'm like stopping myself cuz it's like she just she just learned a lot about herself and She's probably having a mental breakdown, and I shouldn't be too hard on her, and I don't care either way, do you? No, I do not care. Fifteen. Cry. Right? Yes. Okay. For the first time in years, I let my tears flow freely. I do not even know why I am crying, and I find myself talking aloud. You said that crying doesn't make a person weak, but it certainly makes me feel that way. At your mother's abuse? Mm. You're not weak. Princess? Waltz? When did he wake up? Probably when you opened the door and <laughs> started talking. <laughs> You're the strongest person I know. Waltz's voice is soft and his words are slurred. He is clearly still under the influence of the medication he's been given, but he still continues to speak. Despite everything you've gone through, you're still standing on your own two feet. I cannot lie anymore. I have only been pretending to be a strong person. But I cannot do this anymore, knowing that all this time I have been living a life full of lies. 
I am questioning even my mother's affections now. Another dangerously gloomy thought hangs at the brink of my mind. If mother did not care about me, that means no one did at all. I mean, her father did. I'm, I'm, I would put money that her father did, but he was not allowed to show it. Yeah, probably. I do. I care about you, Asindra. I just want to point out that it looks like he's holding his eyebrow. Yeah, it does. <laughs> looks like he's holding his eyebrow in place. Like, give me a sex sleep and kind of dislodge his own because they're both in. <laughs> and let me just pull it off and brush it off because it's a little dusty and put it back on. And then pull it off and shake the dust off and <laughs> smooth it back into place. Yeah. Waltz's voice begins to grow weak as his eye l eyes flutter closed. You're tired, Waltz. Nope, Walt. that's me. Fucking goddamn it. We, we, you know, we went a while. <laughs> You're tired, Waltz. You should sleep. A Syndra. His voice is slurred and slow, but hearing him say my name without the title somehow feels nostalgic. Please don't cry. Little star. Waltz closes his eyes, finally surrendering to sleep. I take a deep breath and leave his room, closing the door quietly behind me. So she went in there for... Comfort? A, a reason. Yeah, a reason. And she ended up just crying on him. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Literally, according to that image. Until he fell asleep. Yep. So, a next, a <laughs> next time, we will read this dream and see what else we can do about our mother or us or whatever the fuck is going on really <laughs> whatever the hell's happening no one knows it'll all come together at the end i'm not worried <laughs> <laughs> so do you have anything left to say com you know she probably woke him up because walking to his room she was going ah! the entire time <laughs> <laughs> so what? Everybody in the place listening to her, she goes like, "God damn it!" Well, she princess is to, up. <laughs> she has to walk around at night. <laughs> Can't she just stay in bed until the rest of us are awake? Yeah. So thank you for watching. I love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> it's really inconvenient that echolocation. <laughs>